Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film Obvious Child. The romantic comedy is a genre that's kind of been in a bit of a rut for a decade or so. It certainly isn't as popular as it used to be. And I think one of the cliches of romantic comedy is they're very Hollywood. They're not real. They exaggerate things. Somebody has to write an article. Like, how to lose a guy in 10 days is kind of the cliche, the most genre kind of romantic comedy. And even it feels like less real than even a sitcom does. It was very safe. People would like to watch it on their couch with their girlfriends and watch it and laugh at it and talk over it. It's not a genre people are taking very seriously. And it's not a genre that's really evolved culturally. It's kind of stuck in almost this 50s mentality. Women do this, men do that, and so forth. And I think Obvious Child is a evolution of a genre because Obvious Child is about a woman played by Jenny Slate who is a Brooklyn comedian who has a one night stand with a guy and then gets pregnant and decides she's going to have an abortion on Valentine's Day no less but between the time she has scheduled the abortion and when it was going to take place she falls more and more in love with the guy Max who's a decent guy and fun to be around and funny and they start falling more and more in love as her abortion date looms. It's kind of lighter than you expect, but not one that is flippant about its subject matter. It's kind of more progressive in showing that certainly everyone's experience with abortion, I'm sure, is different than this, but that she takes it so matter-of-factly and the other women who she talks to who have had abortions take it so matter-of-factly and no one talks about how, you know, their soul was ripped out or something like that. They're kind of real people who make jokes and they're funny and everything like that, but it still takes the beats of a romantic comedy while not feeling very fake and Hollywood, but also feeling very digestible and very easy to go down and kind of the things you'd expect for a romantic comedy. It feels very light, but it's not really light about its subject matter. It's not very light about what it's actually trying to do. The women in this film aren't just like perfectly super feminine and they fall into all these cliches and they're this kind of a woman and the guys aren't, you know, smoking cigars and playing cards and talking about football. They feel more like real characters. When I was a kid and I watched a Hollywood romantic comedy, I'd be like, oh, this must be what like a date's like when you're older. But then when I watched Obvious Child, I was like, oh, this is what a date was like for me when I was younger and single and I could relate more to Obvious Child than I can now when I watch those same romantic comedies when I was a kid and I go this must be like what it's like as an adult and now I'm like oh come on this is ridiculous. This film I think has more of a soul to it and has more of a realism to it. I don't think Hollywood would let them do. Certainly Hollywood wouldn't touch an abortion rom-com but I think that's what's so great about a film like this is oftentimes I think what's interesting is when you have these independent films I think when people hear that, they think they're so different from what's going on in Hollywood. And in certain ways this is, but it's also a very Hollywood-influenced film. Having them fall in love while this thing that she's waiting to tell them about kind of works like a romantic comedy kind of setup. But this is like something that someone in real life would have a problem explaining because it's a really heavy thing. So it, it works a lot better and it's something you can relate to and something you've heard a friend talk about. When you look at a film like this, it kind of shows where the romantic comedy comedy genre could go. It feels so much like a rom-com, has the soul of a rom-com, but is far more progressive and far more real and far more like the kind of rom-com that we should have at this point rather than the rom-coms we did have or the cliches or the unrealistic expectations that we kind of laugh at and love. Obvious Child doesn't do that. There are often times I could relate to it and it was still very funny. I really liked Jenny Slate and everyone kind of talking about how this is a star making role for her. She's really good in this film. She's playing a comedian who works at a bookstore and the bookstore is closing down. She's kind of at a crossroads and it does really much nail like going out in your 20s and trying to be creative and having a job that you mainly have to do your creative output and having a best friend and I wasn't as into her comedy bits. She's far funnier actually when she's the character than her comedy. Sometimes her stand-ups are just very uncomfortable and there are comedians who do that and do that very well. Not that she should be at like the height of comedy because she is starting out. Maybe that was a conscious choice not to really go be as hilarious as Jenny Slate probably could be. It felt like she could probably do better at stand-up. She has been on SNL. She is very well trained but I guess they didn't want it to go too much because if she's like killing every night maybe that wouldn't have made sense for her to be struggling. Oh wow, I just figured that out.
Maybe that's the case. I don't know. But I did definitely think she was funnier as her character with her friend Gabby Hoffman, who's really had a comeback lately from this and uh, Crystal Fairy and Girls. And she's probably the most sane I've seen her be since I've seen her in movies lately. Jake Lacey, who plays Max, he played a good romantic male lead. I didn't actually like him as much when he was on The Office. And as much as I think Jenny Slate could be in more movies after this and lead more movies. I think he could do this romantic lead thing again. He's actually really good at it. And David Cross has kind of a part that I think that was kind of the only filler of the movie. It didn't really have as much of a point to it. I thought most of it was actually really tight except for that one part. Jenny Slate feels like a real woman. She makes fart jokes and she's funny and she's not like this perfect rom-com heroine and obviously her actions would not be those kind of actions in a rom-com. That was when you get more melodramatic, but this film doesn't really do that while still being a lighter movie, which rom-coms I guess are supposed to be. And this film doesn't shy away from doing that while still taking on edgy topics. The director of this film, Julian Rapaspire, I think, shows more of an evolution of a genre that you never thought would evolve. I don't think this film would be a failure if this isn't what romantic comedies become, but I certainly hope it does, because I think this is kind of shows more of where we want it to be, and where I never thought it could be. We never thought it could really show a, like a real date, and still hit those beats. I think this is the kind of film that hopefully we'll look back on, and this was kind of an influential film. You can't really predict something like that, but I think it's a film I want to be influential, and I want to maybe change the rom-com to be more like this, and less like things like a think like a man. Like I've said about those movies, it's like either find a fold laundry to. I think this is a sign to where like you can make a rom-com and it can be like someone's real life and you can take a progressive stance on things and you don't have to fall into kind of the old romantic comedy kind of conservative social norms that we all feel like it needs to and everyone's very gender specific. That's kind of not where I think the viewing public is anymore, and it's kind of really not as progressive as a film like this is. This is a breath of fresh air for romantic comedies. It was a fun film to watch, and I liked kind of seeing a lighter film take on an edgier and harder subject in a way that didn't ruin itself. It's a film that probably takes on something that a lot of films would fall apart doing, and it doesn't do that. It's so well done, it like shows what like a good filmmaker can take a genre and do something new with it and put a new spin on it to make it alive again. And I think Obvious Child does that, like a great director really can. This makes this film groundbreaking, but not just because of the abortion thing, it's what it really does with the genre. It's more than just that rom-com that tackles abortion. So if you have seen Obvious Child and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.